Jesus is our map. Jesus is our guide. Jesus is our pace. And when we fix our eyes on Him, when we keep our eyes focused on Him, we are not going to fall off the mountain. We will not make a wrong turn. We will not make a wrong decision. The fact of the matter, though, is in life, sometimes we do take our eyes off Him. Sometimes we do make a wrong decision. But we learn. That's what this discipline is about in this passage. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten a word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. We're to learn. Discipline is learning. The second part of this journey is a journey of strength. It's like when Gideon was called hiding out in a wine press, treading out grain. It's like when God called David tending sheep, and then again hiding in a cave. And Paul, breathing out murderous threats after his journey of submission, he was called to take beatings, to be stoned. A journey of strength. A journey that after you've gone through this journey of submission, it gets comfortable there. It gets comfortable in that journey of submission that just be all lovey-dovey. But God calls us to something more. God calls us to listen to Him, to take on these challenges. Moses called by the burning bush. He wasn't just called by the burning bush because he had the strength and ability in himself to do it. He's called by the burning bush because that was the only way to get his attention. The hope for most of us is that we don't need a burning bush. That we don't need to be called out in that way. Some of us will. To be called to that journey of strength. To be called to move on to this tougher place. And all along we need to continue to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus so that we do not lose our focus. In these ultra marathons, in these trail runs, it's really easy to get tripped up if you're not paying attention. To trip in a hole, to trip over a root, to miss a rock. And we fall down. The thing we have to do then is to get back. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's an ultra marathon. It's even more. And during this we do endure hardship. And, but it's not like the author of Hebrews said, for many of us, he could have been writing to our church, the church in America, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood. We're not in a situation like my friend in the Sudan who is in prison for six months. His life threatened every day. It's not like the people were learning out from Vietnam thrown in three foot by three foot cells. Threatened by beatings for children as young as 12 years old. Taken to jail and risk. The ultimate question there is, what is your faith worth? Is your faith worth dying for? Is your faith worth bleeding for? Are we going to stay true? and look to Jesus and struggle against sin. Not try to say it's not sin or it's not as bad as somebody else's sin, but struggle. Struggle. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating his sons for what son is not disciplined by his father. If you're not disciplined and everyone on goes discipline, then you're illegitimate children and not true sons. <coughs> Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? Run this race. Scramble when necessary. Crawl when necessary. <coughs> Run when possible. From submission to strength, 
in all of our lives, we have discipline. The hard things that happen in our lives, from Katrina to economic struggles to the oil spill, these things are all things that teach us. And that's the thing we have to know. What is it that we're being taught? What is it that we learned? One of the great things about being here when I first got here was that all the masks were up. Everybody was real. Everybody was living the lesson. We have three lessons that I'd like to share. The first is that the lesson I talked about, getting onto the path, getting onto the journey, and that's we cannot focus on ourselves, we have to focus on God. That's the first thing that, that came to me that people told me when I got here. What's important? As my friend Father Garner said a few weeks ago, make the one thing the one thing. Be focused on Jesus, not on our stuff. Not on what we have, not on what we've accumulated, but on God. Focused on Him. Keeping our eyes focused on Him. It's how we stay on the mountain. It's how we stay grounded. We don't want to be like the prophets from Jeremiah who say things that people want to hear. Who have dreams, they say, in order to tell lies. We have the scriptures to give us the truth. We have God to speak to us. We have Jesus who died for us. And we have the Holy Spirit to guide us. And he's not going to tell us something that's contrary to God's word. We can't focus on ourselves. We must focus on one thing being the one thing. 